Well, now that I got you all pumped up about the intro that we just did, what we're going to talk about today is the square wave versus the other one. You hear me all the time saying square wave is king? We're going to put it to the test today. The reason why you need to know this is because there's a lot of misconception out there. A lot of companies like to boast all kinds of claims. We're going to see what we can do about demystifying some of that. And where you're going to be using that information is really simple. Every time you talk with people, every time you hear stuff about it, every time you go shopping for one or you decide to build your own, um, you'll know a little more about it than yesterday. So let's go on this journey together. Today's video, we're going to be breaking it down in three parts. One, what will we compare the square wave to? Two, how testing was conducted and the results. And finally, what are we to take from that? And then stick with me to the end because there'll be a little bonus. And they laugh about this. How to share your love for PEMF without sounding like a nut job. So here we are. Square wave. Obviously it's the king. And it's gonna face the sinusoid wave today. It's gonna face the triangle wave today. Also we're gonna be talking about the sawtooth wave. And then we're gonna talk about the delta pulse. Very interesting wave by the way. And then the fixed magnetic field or a magnet. So the way it was tested was really simple. They made an hypothesis and then they said, okay, we're gonna do this. We're gonna keep the PMF waveform constant and then we're gonna expose some Petri dish that's gonna grow muscle cell and then we're gonna keep everything the same and we're gonna see which one grows the best. Now, this is a very good visual grading example the results fell in two different category. The first category would be where there was no detectable increase with the muscle cell. And the other category would be where there's consistent and easily seen increase in cell colony density. Both the delta wave and the square wave were grouped together. They consistently increase the cell colony. And would you have to know it? The effectiveness of the delta wave was estimated to be about 70 to 80 percent as effective as the square wave. So yes, spoiler alert, the square wave won this round. Now let's investigate the other waveform. The triangular wave did okay, but it could not be repeated all the time. It seems to be a little more random, so there was not really a steady outcome. The sawtooth, there's no point really talking about it. And the magnet or the steady pulse, like uh, there was nothing. And then the control obviously was a control, so there was no uh, there was no cell growth in that aspect. So what should we take from this? Well, simply said, NASA concluded that the most effective waveform was, yeah, no surprise there, the square wave. They ran a similar study at the University of Michigan. They wanted to test if I make sure that the finding that NASA did, they were able to repeat them. And then the second thing they wanted to do, they wanted to expand the experiment with a really strong magnet to provide a really strong and steady magnetic field. Well, guess what? They found the exact same results. And then the second thing they did by expanding it, they put like a thousand to two thousand five hundred gauss magnet and that did not change anything. They wanted to be able to rule out heat as a medium that would allow the cell to grow faster. And that's why they ran the constant DC uh, through a wire. That created some heat and yet they did not see any more growth from those cells. When no electrical current was applied, there was never any indication of any type of benefits. When there was a steady magnetic field or a bigger than a thousand gauss magnet, there was never any visible indication of any effect either. Sine wave also gave no visual effect on cell colony formation or their density. Triangular wave, rarely but not very steady, caused a very slight increase in the cell colony. The delta wave resulted in a very, very good increase in cell density. You're able to see it visually that was pretty cool the square wave was a robust and very trustworthy increase in cell colony density if you also look at the square wave pad 
for the same amount of energy as everybody else, it looks like we could have had a bigger surface of cell growth area and it probably could have filled it. I don't think they maximize the potential of it. I think the square wave is way more efficient than the result that were shown to us. So the magic sauce is really simple according to what we've seen. Rapidly changing magnetic field with the only waveform that yielded highly reliable, repeatable, easily detected effect on cell colony formation. These were including in the delta wave and the square wave because they're rapidly changing. Okay, here how we talk about PEMF. PEMF emits energy. Everything is energy out there, guys. So PEMF emits energy. Your cell absorbs that energy the same way your skin absorbed the UV that you don't see and you make vitamin D out of it. Your cell absorb the energy that the PEMF makes. They go to work and then your body is allowed to do what it does best. Stay healthy, fix itself, prevents um, illnesses, uh, fights cancer. It just, just name it, it does it. You know, the human body is an amazing, amazing machine. I basically like to compare sitting on the mat on the PEMF as if you're going to the tanning salon and you see you, you lay down in the tanning boot. There's no difference. It's basically the same thing. It's just a different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So there it is. You can pimp. You can go some tanning. It's all the same. I really hope today helped you guys understand a few things and why I'm so animate about the square wave. Now, it is true for the nerd out there like me that a true square wave does not exist. It's always there is a rise and a fall and, and the time that it can happen. Nothing is instantaneous. But we're talking a such a small amount of time compared to the exposure that it's not worth measuring. So for all intents and purposes, we call them square wave. All right, guys, in closing, <clears throat> we talked about a lot of stuff today, mainly about why the square wave is so good. Second, how not to sound like a nut job compared to tanning boot salon. Light is light. Energy is energy. And finally, now I think you're starting to really understand why I have the coil the way they are on the pillow, why my coils are that size, why I have so many wraps around each coil, why I use the square wave, why I build the stuff the way I build it. I'm asking you guys if you lasted this long on the video, just leave me a comment and then just, like just give me some ideas what you'd like to hear next. Um, it means a lot, like I know it sounds cheesy and aired out all the time, but until I started doing this, I didn't realize how important it was to the video creator. It really motivates them to carry on, especially when they're as small as we are. Anyway, thank you for being there. Thank you for encouraging me. Uh, I hope you're getting something out of this. And uh, if you need help, you want a mat, you want some pieces, just send us an email. Uh, the email will be in the description. And then uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, bye.